ladies, this is a presentation on Restriction Digest Gel. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about, and note that there are sticky ends on the DNA that is cut. Okay, uh, once you cut your vector with restriction enzymes, so our vector would be like a plasmid that's able to transport new DNA inside a bacterium. We can also cut a gene of interest out with the same restriction enzyme, so our sticky ends match up, and we can place that gene of interest into um, our plasmid. This will be attached together with DNA ligase to make one complete sequence of DNA. And I'm going to show you that with actually looking at plasmid. So here's a plasmid. Okay, this is our vector. Here's the fragment. Uh, this is with our gene of interest. The gene of interest could be from human DNA. It could be from jellyfish with that GFP gene. It could be from any other organism. So we're going to take that gene of interest, put it inside our vector or plasmid. We will use DNA ligase and we can create a recombinant DNA plasmid. And this re, uh, recombinant DNA plasma can then be placed into bacteria through transformation. The bacteria can grow and they can uh, produce either that gene of interest or make more copies of that plasmid. So in order to understand how um, and look at how our DNA was cut, sometimes we'll use gel electrophoresis. So say, for example, we make a plasmid, but we just want to verify that the gene is on that plasmid. What we can do is we can cut our DNA off again with restriction enzymes, and we can cut it into little pieces. And when we do this, we can load the DNA sample into wells of agarose gel. We can apply a current and the DNA will move through this agarose. So agarose uh, gel is made um, basically with a carbohydrate found in seaweed. And it's kind of, uh, there's little molecules there that the DNA kind of have to weave in and out of. So small pieces of the DNA will travel really quickly through the gel. Large pieces will have a harder time moving around that agarose. So it's able to easily separate the mixture um, based on base pair length. You can see here, this is what it looks like when you illuminate it. You can see uh, the different frag fragments that were cut um, as a result of restriction enzymes. Sometimes this is even actually used in paternity tests. It's used um, in criminal investigations to identify uh, different people. So if you cut um, a human genome with restriction enzymes, you should see a certain number of fragments. And we can compare those to see if maybe the crime scene DNA matches with a certain individual or with parents, you can see if there's similarities between them and their children. Uh, sometimes whenever you get a DNA sample, you need to amplify it and make it make more of it. So sometimes we will use PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction, in order to amplify our DNA, so make copies of it. So say, for example, scientists or um, even crime scene technicians pull a, a DNA sample from a crime scene. They only have a, a small amount of that DNA and they need to amplify it so they can have more of it to experiment on. They'll do PCR to amplify and make copies of that DNA so they can experiment with it. How this works is they take the DNA sample, they will create a targeted sequence. Uh, what happens first is you, the DNA will be denatured, so it will heat up to a high temperature which will cause the hydrogen bonds to break and then primers will be added. Primers will be added um, during the annealing phase, so this is when the temperature reduces a little bit. The primers will adhere to the specific sites based on complementary base pairing, and then extension will take place by adding new nucleotides. What's really, really interesting is that extension um, will um, add the nucleotides in the correct sequence and you'll have um, additional copies of that DNA, so going from one to multiple copies of that DNA. The interesting part is that the DNA polymerase enzyme is what we call a special type of DNA polymerase. It's called TAC polymerase. And uh, TAC polymerase is a very special kind because it can um, live at very high temperatures. 
because during the denaturization phase, the temperature has to rise to break those hydrogen bonds, but we don't want to denature our, de our, our enzyme at that point. So um, they use TAC DNA or TAC DNA polymerase, which is actually comes from hydrothermal vents, bacteria that live in hydrothermal vents where the temperature is very high. Uh, once the DNA has been amplified, sometimes sequencing will take place. Sequencing uh, can use these clone genes and will follow PCR pretty closely, but it uses these very special uh, tagged fluorescent nucleotides. And when a tagged fluorescent nucleotide is added, uh, the DNA polymerase can't add any more nucleotides. So what's gonna happen is, say for example, I have the sequence that's TGCAAC. So as soon as um, DNA polymerase will add these nucleotides, as soon as it gets to a fluorescent one, it'll stop. So maybe the first one has T, second one has a normal nucleotide, fluorescent G. Next one has a normal nucleotide T, normal nucleotide G, fluorescent C. And what's gonna happen is these will go through a very speci specific machine that's kind of like gel electrophoresis, and it will separate them by length, and it will be able to detect those fluorescent nucleotides going through the machine. In order to better understand this, you need to um, complete the lab for tomorrow. It's on PCR and DNA sequencing. It is found on um, this site right here. So you can click the link and you're gonna click on Bacterial ID Lab and go through that. We will talk about the different bacterial samples that you are able to identify um, in the lab tomorrow. So please try to answer that in preparation for tomorrow's class. Okay, uh, please bring any questions with you.